Good afternoon. <laughs> We respect everyone's time on today. For those who don't know who I am, I am, uh, I am Dr. Seymour. I'm the superintendent of Clear Creek Amanda Community School District. And my partner in crime here is uh, Mr. Lehman, who's my associate superintendent uh, in the district. Uh, we have several people here around us, guys. If the principals, guys, can you guys lift your hands, all of our principals that are here today? from Oak Hill and the high school, the middle school, Amana, North Bend, Tiffin, all of our principals here. What about our other administrative team? If you would raise your hands. Other administrative teams, good, here. And we have some board members that are here as well. I just want to acknowledge our board members if they can raise their hand, on which we appreciate them being here as well. Um, really quick, we got a lot of stuff to do today. So if you see on your table, one of the things you'll see is a little tent. On this tent, you have a, uh, a code, a scan code on here. So when it's time for you to do the survey, you'll have an opportunity to scan that code and make comments on the survey or what you think, uh, what's going on, uh, you give your, your input in and what you think as well. Across the walls, you see maps that are both lined on this left side of me and maps that are lined on the right side of me. And you have maps that are <laughs> aligned in the back. And for those that are others may have received the actual maps that were presented out via email uh, that went out as well so that uh, our community people can see those things as well. So first of all, I want to say there are a couple of things that are going on, okay? So that we can have clarity of what we're gonna do, okay? There are two things. One thing is the boundary conversation, okay? The other thing I think people are getting a little confused about is grade configuration. Grade configuration and boundary, that's two separate things. The boundaries are what you're seeing on the walls. That's the maps. And that's uh, north, south, east, west. This group may go to this school. This group may go to that school. As far as the geographic location, OK? That's what the boundary piece is. That's something that you're coming on. At the end of the day, the school board is going to vote on that, whether or not, based on your input that you give, School board's gonna vote on that and what they think would be best in the long run. The grade configuration is something, that's the how, okay? That's something that is created by uh, the administrative team on the schools, okay? So I know there's some things that have been floating out, like, oh, this option here and this option here and why we only have these options. And ultimately, one of the reasons why we only had certain options and one option that we have to go with, guys, is simply affordability. There are options that we, as a district, we're not able to afford to be able to go forth with, with certain things. So what I want you to do, if you see on your table, see those little cards, those index cards and those pins? Okay, if you have any questions regarding the grade configuration piece, simply just write your question down on those index cards and I'll address all of those questions that you have uh, regarding any type of grade configuration. I might even just come sit by you and talk to you personally if you want me to, that's fine. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Lehman wanna add on to some things to what I just said as well. So of the four options that you all see, when Dr. Seymour talks about being fiscally responsible, the reality for us is the district only has so many new positions they can add every year. Um, the number for us for the 24, 25 school year is 10. So currently at our elementary, elementary level, level, we staff 68 full-time employees. We call those FTEs. For 24-25, we can add 10 FTEs. Now, something to consider is that 10 FTEs encompasses our entire district. So those 10 FTEs aren't just for elementary buildings. They're also for our middle school. They're also for our high school. We've been adding five FTEs as a standard for the last several years as we try to get things back on course financially. Um, but we have had to make decisions to be able to add our 10 FTEs while opening the building. And all four of these options allow us to stay very close to that 68 number or add a few. What it doesn't do is it doesn't reduce any of the programming you already know. It doesn't reduce any of our positions for our teachers. And it allows us to have more flexibility at both the middle school and high schools and continue to try and create opportunities for kids. So uh, my name is Jenna Wallace. I work with RSP, so we are the consulting firm 
That's putting together the different boundary scenarios. We put together the enrollment projections um, and really dig into this data and work with the action team for these options tonight. So I'm going to very briefly go over the information tonight. The primary focus of this meeting is listening to you guys and have the opportunity to ask us any questions. So I'm going to be pretty quick. And the packets at your tables is the presentation that I'm going to go through. All right, so what is this process? So you can see here that we have um, been working with our admin team for the past couple of months. We started with a board meeting where we um, created the framework of this process, looking at what is the boundary criteria, what is the guiding principles, leading into um, some work sessions with our admin team and to public input. We have one more meeting after this input where we will discuss what we heard from you guys, what were those primary um, items of consideration, and then the results of that survey before we go back to the board. All right, so I just want to briefly talk over about what we call setting the stage. So trying to um, solidify how we have the numbers that you guys are going to see later on, and that's our enrollment projections. So RSP, we've been working with CCA for, I think, about the last six to eight years where we do annual enrollment projections and it's all based on data. So one of the key signature slides of information that goes into that model is this slide here of live birth data. So we're looking at the relationship of live births in the county to kindergartners five years later to try to look at in future years, what is that kindergarten class looking at? We look at all of our past enrollment by grade. So as grade levels come in at different levels and they move through the system, are they increasing? Are they decreasing? What does that mean at the building level and the total district level? We'll also analyze our cohort change. So a cohort is how a grade moves from year to year. So as a class of fourth grade moves into fifth grade, what is that tendency that they may increase or decrease? We definitely see some cohort changes at the grade configuration changes. So maybe students coming in for high school or students coming in for middle school. So all of that's going to be calculated into the projections. So when we move forward between our five and 10 year analysis, we have that factored in. This visual here tries to um, kind of our first geographic look of our student data, and it's a student heat map. So as our um, all students were geocoded into the system, we were looking at what is the density and the proximity of students living together. And you can see that heat bubble where the hottest points of red is the hottest density of students in the district. So trying to look at what is the current situation, where do our current students live? And then we pivot and try to look at where will future students live. And that's what this growth area map is. So we meet with um, all of the cities, the different organizations in the district, and do um, what we just do, like driving tours, or trying to kind of map out where development is happening. Because we know that is one of the main um, variables into why your district has been growing. This visual here shows green as the areas that are under active residential development. Yellow is what we have identified on a five-year timeline. That's kind of based on city input. And then the purple is more of a 10-year, so more of a long-term potential growth. That's more based on infrastructure availability and on a potential horizon if development continues at that pace. So all that information and a whole lot more um, if you're really interested on in how we get to these final numbers, we do have a full enrollment analysis that is on the district website that digs way deeper, and this is very high level. But it all comes back to what this table is here, so your projections, where we have the next five years mapped out at elementary, middle, and high school level. And you can see at each level, we're forecasted to continue growing. So that's kind of that overview of the whole district, but tonight's conversations just focus on the elementary level. So our current elementary map, um, you can see here, you'll also see it in the large maps around the system. So we have our different areas labeled on this map, Amana being purple, Clear Creek blue, North Bend green, and Tiffin and Oak Hill um, orange. 
leading into our enrollment projections. So this is really important because this is going to be the, what those current numbers and the current challenges are. All right, so you'll see um, lots of different numbers at this table. We have our current boundaries, what that current um, grade configuration is in each building, and then the um, functional capacity. So how many students are optimally served in the building? And with that, when you see those percentages, that's gonna be the percentage of enrollment versus that capacity. It's more of a utilization factor. Where you see that yellow, that's highlighting that we have some challenges forecasted in these next five years. Tiffin Elementary is getting above that 100% utilization. And we also get up there with North Bend as well. So with that, that started this conversation, that we know we'd have to address some challenges in the future. So we set out, you guys went out for a bond, we got the bond approved for building the new school, and we looked at what is this boundary process. So this slide here just goes through what is the board um, approving for our guiding principles. So looking at when we come back um, in January with a final proposal, that it meets these criteria and it meets the framework that they set out. The next thing we ask the board is to prioritize boundary criteria. So looking at all the different things that go into a boundary process. So when you're looking at a map, there's a lot of different variables to analyze the map. You can look at student demographics, proximity to buildings, you can look at transportation or enrollment, and there's everything that we're gonna look at. Sometimes they work against each other. So what we had do, what we had the board do is prioritize criteria so that we know what's most important to the values of the community and to the board. And that's what you'll see here. So our number one boundary criteria was our fiscal considerations, making sure that the final plan fit within those margins and can be um, something that we actually implement next year. And then the next was neighborhoods intact. So looking at any boundary changes that we do potentially make, we keep our neighborhoods together, we move our units all together between schools, and we try to keep that neighborhood feel as best we can. And then the last criteria was our projected enrollment, building utilization. Do we have an adequate number of students in each facility? Are we causing any challenges in future years that we're gonna have to do this all over again? We don't want that. So we're trying to keep all these, these are, think in your mind when we're out back there, if these are the top three things that we're trying to achieve with the different options. And then lastly, this concept, this is an RSP concept that is a wrap around this whole process, and it's the concept of ACE. So we know that in every school, these three key items work together. So in your buildings, you do have to account for the academics. The reason the students are in their schools, they're here to learn, they're here to be served by the district. Next, we have culture. You guys have a relationship with your students and your teachers, and we're gonna try to maintain that culture and account for that in any of these. And then lastly, economics, making sure that we are fiscally responsible, that we are setting forward a future for the district and maintaining our economic status. All right, with all that, that really sets just the framework. And I'm just briefly go over these boundary concepts and then lead into our small group discussions. All right, so this table here is really important. It is mapping out what the current grade configuration is and what next year's grade configuration is. Like Dr. Seymour said in his opening, they're connected conversations, but they're different. So we do have administration responsible for the grade configuration and the board responsible for the final boundary plan. So what we have mapped out here is we have Amana and Clear Creek staying the same with PK4. We have Tiffin opening here as a K1, Oak Hill becoming a 2-3, North Bend as a K3, and the new elementary, East Ridge, opening as a 4-5, utilizing the joint Tiffin and North Bend boundary and serving all of fifth grade in the district. All right, so with that, what we created from that grade configuration is looking at that projected enrollment 
and looking at what are the future challenges, we created four concepts. So the first one is keep the boundary the same as what you guys saw, the current. By opening East Ridge, um, we solve the challenges at North Bend and um, Tiffin. And so we're able to, we don't have to move everybody. Um, it's not as, um, not as equal in utilization between the buildings. We don't have any challenges. So it could be that we keep the boundary exactly the same. And then concept A, you'll see an area labeled A that we move between schools, B and C. So you'll see that more clearly in this next visual. All right, so like I said here, so these are kind of the small maps of all the maps that are around the room, wherein the first option is just keep the boundaries current as what they are. Concept A moves a small area along the county line um, to Amana from Clear Creek. Option B looks at an area moving from Tiffin, or from, um, yeah, from, Cl from Tiffin to Clear Creek. And then concept C, from Clear Creek to Tiffin. So you can see here between the areas, if it's north of the highway or south of the highway, the area that would potentially move out of Clear Creek. All right, so the next thing that you guys are gonna analyze on all your maps, it's located in the top right corner of those maps are the projection tables. So looking at with this new grade configuration and with the concept boundaries in each map, what is the projected enrollment by facility? So in this visual here, you'll see that the current boundaries, if we maintain, we do solve our capacity challenges. The other thing to think about is not just overutilization, but underutilization. What is the optimal number of students being served in a facility? So looking at numbers, we were thinking that we could move more students into a mana. They do have um, the room to grow. And so that's how we're looking at concept A, where we move a small section of students along that county line into a mana to boost their enrollment a little bit. Concept B and C, look at the ability, so knowing that there's future growth in the Clear Creek zone and with the new school opening in paired, that we could move more students into Tiffin. Um, you're closer to that facility, it's more of a proximity thing of looking at B and C, the two different neighborhoods that we're considering. And you'll see those projection, <coughs> projection tables. All right, then last slide here, just our kind of main takeaways of these differences. And so we're always trying to pull this back to the beginning of the presentation when we talked through our boundary criteria. So all of the concepts and the options, number one, was it fiscally considerations? So we look at that, like Dr. Seymour said, all these concepts keep within that potential FTE that we can budget for next year. So check on all three of those we can look at that and know that these boundaries can be implemented next year. The next one was that neighborhoods intact. So you have different neighborhoods that would be potentially moving in concept A, B, and C. And so we want your opinion and your guys' feedback on the different areas that move in the concepts. And then lastly, that projected enrollment. So looking at, do you keep it current? Less balance between the facilities, but no students impacted. Do you do concept A that looks at better utilizing a mana? Or is it concept B or C where you try to move some students out of Clear Creek? All right, so then last thing before we just break out into small groups is this survey. So um, you guys see the QR code on the tables, on your PDFs. Um, it's a survey we put together on MetroQuest, so it's more of an informational survey that then asks for your feedback at the end. It also helps for people who weren't able to attend or live stream in that they can get that same information. So you'll have five slides to kind of click through that give you this framework, and all in all, asking the final questions of what concept do you most support for the board to consider, and then do you have any considerations that you would like the board to know? So that's gonna be the best way to give any feedback. Um, anything written or we're gonna take notes on all the stations, but 
survey's the best way to keep everybody kind of all agglomerated together. Okay, so then, so now just public input. So um, I tried to keep that pretty brief, and we can have a lot more time to just talk at the stations. We have the three stations um, around the room. Each one has a map for each option, and that projection table at the top corner. There's gonna be my team with RSP. You can see Rob back there. Um, he's part of the team, so in the blue sweater. And then we have district admin and board members that we're all here just to hear your input and ask any questions. Um, or answer any questions that you guys may have. So with that, I think that's, we're just on to the next steps, knowing that next is another admin meeting. We'll take all this information in the survey and um, move forward with a board proposal soon. <laughs>